The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and just overall sweet host. Always like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And what do we have? Oh, got to get that in. And what do we have uh, today? Uh, mark it off just a little, not much. Uh, hit our uh, 2300 on the S&P cash pulling off. Uh, was on John Logan's show this morning in the late part of it, saying that at least I had man, probably this whole week, I had very few stocks giving any kind of signals, either bouncing off lows or going off highs. That rapidly changed yesterday. We'll talk about that. Um, but uh, to me, you've got fun buying the first couple of days next week. But uh, it kind of looks to me like uh, we're looking at a stronger dollar probably when China comes back. Uh, I'm not so hot on gold here. So I'm kind of against uh, you know, my brethren around here. I'm kind of uh, thinking there's a little difference going on. But uh, my guess right now would be if you were looking for a pullback today, or at least yesterday was the first sign, might see a little bit more of it today when I do the uh, scans uh, later tonight. And uh, to me, normally when you get these kind of, you know, you get 40, 50 stocks that testing or breaking previous highs on lighter volume, normally you get a little bit of pullback, you get one more test. If that test uh, continues to generate a lot of stocks, um, I had about 10 stocks that broke out with a sign of strength, about 40 or 50 that uh, came in not with just lighter volume, but with like half the volume. And we'll go through, we'll look at a couple of those. Uh, some of those are having earnings coming up very shortly. Normally, if that's the first shot across the bow that potentially uh, we are going to have some kind of pullback in the market. And so I, I'm starting to see a few signs out here. Uh, now, when I look at more things, um, at least going into uh, what we had been looking at, uh, saw a little bit, if I can find it here, where is it at? It's one of these little icons that is just been tough for me because it seems to move around all the time, and it doesn't really. It's always in the same place, but for some reason, I have a hard time looking at it. Um, as I said, I'm not predicting the end of the world, but option market makers, including today, uh, pretty much are really going off in February and saying that we're probably going to get a pullback. And that pullback's probably going to be to what was the low end of support before, which is 2240 on the S&P cash. Now, we've got fun buying. We've got a little bit of earnings. Most of that will be next week. Do I think the earnings are going to be bad? No, I think they're going to be much more like what we saw today. But again, at one point, you're going to get everybody in the market, and you got to have somebody not in the market. There aren't a great deal of shorts, and one of the reasons why we've probably had a muted high up here. This is one of these things where the shorts kind of have quit shorting over the last few days. Now, does that mean that the market's going down to zero? The answer is no. I'm not predicting the end of the world. I am saying, though, that the best traders in the world better than any I know, uh, have ever heard, speak with one voice in the options market. And they are saying that we think we're going to pull back a little bit in February. That's all I'm saying. I know I'm going to catch a lot of hell and I get some angry hate email. I may read it again out here. Uh, but to me, uh, just like Christmas, everything lined up, said we were going to break out. We did not. I thought more likely it was a sideways market. I think I'm going to claim a victory lap saying that when we came back from the beginning of the month, it was. 
eventually we're going to break out higher. If we broke out higher and we had significant volume, then you want to wait for the pullback on light volume. Now, I was uh, I said yesterday, I was looking for something around 5 billion shares, maybe a little bit more to really signal that we had the kind of breakout that I wanted to see. You know, we had uh, 3.8 billion, kind of in that range. Uh, so a little, it wasn't, it wasn't half the volume, one 2.8 billion. It was good, but I'm going to say it was lukewarm, maybe a little bit more than lukewarm, but not hot. If you got your oatmeal that way, you'd say, can you heat the oatmeal up a little? That's the way I'm, it's kind of an oatmeal market. You want it a little hotter. You did, it wasn't too hot, but it wasn't hot enough. And that normally means that you get a little bit of pullback. And, of course, the first thing that happens is you get a lot of stocks hitting highs with lighter volume. We're going to talk about a few of those today. I've got, at least in the short-term newsletter, a position that I think will do well in this. It is not a particular index. Uh, and normally it leads the market. So we'll talk about that next week and see whether I'm right or wrong or not. Uh, you know, normally, it's not whether I'm right or wrong. It's just if I'm really, really right is what I'm looking for. I don't mind taking a small uh, hit uh, as long as the uh, payoff when I'm right is massively uh, more than the uh, small downside that normally my trades have. So a lot of times I'm not yelling and screaming. I just know that over time I will make uh, gobs a lot. That's a technical term. Gobs a lot more money. Uh, playing asymmetrical bets than playing symmetrical bets. That is uh, playing for a $1 win and hoping my wins are more than my losses. I just try to keep my losses less and my wins gigantic. Not always easy to do, and the market doesn't always give you that. But uh, I am the biggest opportunist that I know, and I'm always waiting for that fat pitch. That fat pitch may be coming out of the pitcher's glove and may be here midweek next week. So we'll talk more about that. Uh, as always, we like to start this show off with a little bit of history. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll do that, too. Somebody's already emailed. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. They wanted to see the chart on the options curve out here. So what do we have? Um, we got history. What do we have today? Oh, in 1938, after a projected war with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, the New York Stock Exchange finally recommends an internal reorganization that will install a board of governors, salaried independent president, and a specialized administrative staff. Uh, previously, the exchange had functioned like a private gentleman's club, conduct enforced mainly by unspoken codes of honor and pro bono presidents cho chosen, 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 from among his fellow brokers. Uh, that kind of worked until everything blew up around 2000, mid 2000s. And uh, the, I think the uh, president of the uh, New York Stock Exchange was getting what, $200 million on the way out? I forget his name. Boy, they savaged him horribly. I can't remember his name. Maybe somebody remembers the, the end. But uh, just remember you're always uh, swimming with the sharks. And you have to be careful. We'll be back. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Uh, thanks to uh, Steve in South Carolina who tells me that it's uh, Richard Dick Grasso uh, who we were talking about. He used to run it. His son's still around. I don't know if that's his son that I see on TV from time to time. He's gone. He cashed his check and moved on. I think he had to give some money back. But I think he got like $200 million on the way out and had to give back fifteen just to give people, get people off his back. But uh, yeah, there's always an enabler in there somewhere. Uh, other news of interest out here. Um, somebody said, uh, man, Japan dropped like a rock today. I, I did bring this up, and that is... China cut off uh, some of the new loans. And, of course, their market's closed. But if you want to see a, a very good uh, correlation, you've got to look at China and Japan because they're big trade partners. And if you're trading Japan, I would always, even if China's closed, you kind of kind of watch what's going on. Uh, China doesn't tweet, but they do make announcements. And a lot of times those announcements are deep in when they're on vacation and when the uh, come back you see a lot of movement so i'm kind of looking for that uh next week as they come back but not surprised to see japan down after china pulling the brakes on loans that we discussed yesterday also kind of interesting is uh billionaire george soros as i like to call him a real life john, uh, james bond villain uh is uh got his short positions dating back to 2012 published on a Dutch financial market regulator's website this week due to, quote, quote, human error, or as I like to call it, the old honest mistake. Man, oh, did we do that? Oh, that's horrible. How did we do that? Of course, uh, the convicted uh, inside trader in France uh, once brought the Bank of England to its knees on gold, has spent a lot of his money uh, around the world uh, fomenting uh, death and destruction. He's been very uh, uh, instrumental in uh, pushing um, fungible money into terrorists in the Mideast, uh, and uh, a lot of people not liking it at all. In fact, in Hungary, the president uh, has talked about how he wants him dead. 
Uh, the uh, Dutch probably much not happier with him, and that's why I'm thinking that this human error may have been, quote, quote, the old honest mistake. But uh, watch out. He spent millions uh, around the globe, including in the U.S., uh, with uh, kind of, uh, I'm going to say, uh, Joseph Goebbels kind of propaganda uh, and huge propaganda arms. In fact, uh, we talked about the, the ads this weekend uh, where some of his loosely affiliated issues are uh, paying money to come out and uh, do some astroturfing and make people think, uh, at least to some degree, uh, things aren't quite what everybody else thinks they are. I guess if you have to pay a protester, are they really a protester? Or are they just uh, eye candy out there? Anyway, George Soros, not my kind of guy, but uh, certainly... Uh, lives on the very edge of uh, promoting terrorism around the globe. Don't be surprised, especially, like I said, uh, Hungarian president wants him dead, wants him dead now. I would not be surprised to see this guy's airplane go down. Uh, he's gone around and made a lot of enemies around the world. And when you're uh, like that, kind of hard to get to you, but uh, not impossible. Uh, he's kind of, as my dad used to say, when you're walking on eggs, you probably don't want to hop. Anyway, uh, interesting big man on Wall Street there. Uh, what else do we have going on? I wanted to talk about this, and that's uh, I brought this up kind of in the John Logan show this morning. The uh, S O L X or X can't even say it. S O X L, a nice little pop out here today. But what I really am looking at, uh, as we said to begin the show was some of these stocks making, especially the weaker ones or the ones that have had big runs, starting to have lighter volume as we get up to these highs. On the 28th in the SOXL, the daily bull, uh, bull semiconductors, uh, we had the big volume day of 536,000 uh, shares on the 28th of December, a day that should be pretty light, right? Into the, into the year, everything shouldn't have a lot of volume. Well, we had that. Yesterday, as we broke through that particular high, 330,000 shares. Today, uh, I don't know if this is right. I'm going to check. 86,000 shares. So some of these things, they don't have a huge volume out there, but they are interesting. Some of the other ones that have run up uh, in the past uh, that I'm looking at, you know, I kind of think that they should be, uh, stocks should be congruent. And that is, if they come down, they probably should come up on more volume if you want to think that they're bullish when they hit highs. If it's about the same, a lot of times they're just trapped in trading range. Cummings was one of those stocks. He had a lot of volume, 2.47 billion shares on December 7th, a day that will live in infamy. We can look at that as $148 uh, yesterday, but just 1.35 million shares. This is, you know, pretty late in January. Now, the energy wasn't all that bad off this January low. So I'm not going to say that it's the end of the world or anything. But again, we were hitting highs out here on several stocks. Um, that one had been pretty uh, pretty good. Off the uh, floor, one that I don't like has been Chipotle. This one came back, still has high volume untested low from December 7th with almost 5 million shares. Now it's gone back up to the top of its trading range November 14th. And that one had 1.86 million shares just 761,000 shares yesterday. So again, is the energy on the way up all that bad? Eh, not in this one. But uh, what it does tell me is the energy didn't increase. Uh, you did hit those highs with lighter volume. And most likely, what you're looking at is a trading range developed. But again, with a high volume low on a gap down, you still want to see that thing tested. And that's uh, 362.45 before I get the green light to ever uh, pull the trigger again on CMG. We've got some other ones out there. Again, uh, China is closed, so I'll have to figure out. But Yum Brands, this thing's been pecking away up here. Now, it's got earnings, so I'm not going to touch it. Uh, but uh, not a lot of juice. You had 10 million shares September 2nd at 65.77. You got within seven cents of it with this four million shares on October 28th. The big pull back, the big run back up. Energy on this one has been very bad since that November 4th low. You got up here now 
with this 2 million shares yesterday. You're back with light volume. Now, this is probably going to hang up here till earnings, but they whiff at all. Look at this one right back to 6150. So I think that there are some things setting up out here. I've never been a fan of Yelp. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> um, I'll answer that email in private. Uh, Yelp. Um, this one I've never been a fan of. I hate the business model mostly because it has the same problems that Facebook has, which is what is real, what is an opinion. Uh, we're talking about what they call in politics astroturfing. Uh, that is hiring people to uh, go out and protest. Not actual protesters, right? And that's the problem with Yelp. You got a lot of people in there with self-serving needs. Uh, and it is problematic to figure out who's got a good review because they actually believe it. Who is the competitor down the street that's just smearing its competitor? Continues to be a problem. What is the truth? We'll talk about this more when we come back. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And uh, earlier, I may not have made it clear when I was talking about Japan. I was actually talking about to the person about Sony, but uh, on a down day on a on that, it's just a lot of times when you're selling a lot of stuff. Uh, Sony sells a lot of stuff to China. Not a big deal to me thinking that there's a little bit of causal effect on some of the larger 
uh, Japanese companies out there when that goes that way. Uh, okay, we were talking about Yelp. Let's get back to that. And uh, again, I'm not raining on anybody's parade probably till mid next week. Like I said, this is just the first signs of topping. And we will need confirmation by probably mid next week. But we shall see. Uh, to, what do we have here? We're off uh, four points on the S&P cash volumes, just over 2 billion shares. So kind of a light volume Friday. We're about uh, 350 million, 400 million behind yesterday. So it's not a high volume uh, uh, pullout. Again, I, I think I said it at the beginning of the year when I came back. I'm not really moving and playing indexes here. I'm playing a lot of individual stocks as I don't see a huge move either up or down in the S&P. What are we, we're at 2270, we're, uh, and finally broke out, we're at 2293. Uh, not a big move in my opinion, at least in the, the amount of time that it's taken us to go up here in the energy. So again, I, to me, this is not where the big money is, maybe if you're playing it in a day. But uh, for me, not a lot of movement out here. Maybe if you were in the futures, uh, you could claim it as a big prize, but uh, 20 point move in the S&P isn't a whole lot to me, which is all you have right now. Anyway, we were talking about Yelp. Uh, Yelp coming back into its previous high. Uh, it's got a little gap above it. Of course, this one has not been doing well. But again, what I really think is this last leg from the December 15th low, the energy has once again fallen out. You're back into the previous highs of October 5th. That had 2.4 million shares. You got into it uh, and starting into that candle with about 1.5 million shares. So some of these weaker stocks that have been weak for a while, kind of giving you that uh, look. Wyndham, uh, nice little pop higher out here. But again, um, into the March 18th high, $79.37, 3 million shares. And what do we get? 700,000 shares uh, so far today, is that right? Yeah, and, my, and not and not even into a million yesterday. So again, this is the, the these are this is kind of the opposite of the green shoots, where you see a few stocks coming up off the bottom. Most of these are tests of the high. Don't know much about this company, Wright Medical Group. I'll check them out over the weekend. But uh, a nice little uh, test of the high. A lot of these stocks uh, are having earnings coming up. And uh, you'll take a look at it. August 23rd, 2550, 5.37 million shares. We got into it with a million shares a few days ago. Kind of moving out here to the sideways. But again, a little less energy up off this November 2nd low. So we haven't seen a lot of this. And that's why I continue to say, you know, we got to watch out. This is the first time that we've seen in a few weeks any signals on some stocks. We bought some uh, railroad and concrete stocks when we saw uh, them test lows in the daily newsletter. We're out of both of those now. Uh, and some, you actually have uh, some big volume on, but those are some, I don't think those are reverse ones. Now let's get into something else out here. Uh, Telefonica Brazil. Uh, VIV is the symbol on this one. It's come back up to this uh, big gap down that happened on the 9th of September. Uh, but uh, you got back up pretty much in this area on November 8th with 3.4 million shares. And then you got into it with 1.7 million shares. The energy off the December 2nd low, back up all this way, not all that exciting or impressive either. So again, uh, we've had, we talked about the stocks that broke out with a sign of strength yesterday. We'll talk about the tech stocks here uh, in, the, after the, in the next segment. But again, Visa, I brought this one up on uh, John Logan's show this morning. You kind of, it's got earnings coming out, but that doesn't mean that the volume should fall in half, which is what it did. November 10th, $83.78, 17.1 million shares. And of course, yesterday, 9 million shares. You got earnings coming out. No one really wanting to get out in front of it, but this wasn't a breakout uh, pre-earnings. Everybody's still a little nervous out here buying these stocks at the highs. But uh, a lot of times when you get a roll and a pullback, uh, you get a soft roll, and this may be what we're looking at as we go into it. Oh, I did see it. I will get to all your emails out here. Um, uh, I'll answer that one. Uh, to 
Can you tell us your opinion on these two inverse VIX products? Um, the VIX, uh, da, 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 wondered how you could safely take advantage of the other side. Um, if uh, just because the longs, uh, the, the, the pain that you will feel are so horrible going on a short the VIX, and of course you don't want to short the VIX down here at these levels, um, but you, if you were going to short it, if you thought, hey, we're going up higher, we're going to be in a week, I don't, it, it's almost impossible for me to not think instantly about buying out of the money puts and calls on the VIX, if you're bullish or bearish, um, especially right now, if you were going to do anything in these, I don't know how you wouldn't be in a option with limited loss. Um, they're just, they're not cheap, but they're so far lower risk. The risk, uh, risk reward is probably, I'm going to say normally two to five times better buying a option on the VIX. So if you're going to play these, uh, certainly do it. Even if you're doing it on the other side, there are puts and calls on both sides of these ETFs. Just look into those. I just don't understand the um, the idea of taking a huge risk on the VIX products unless you are very good at trading them. Uh, I think I am, uh, but again, I've steered clear of them for a while. I think I had a, a nice little run the last time, but that was about it. I'd have to go back and look at my record. I've had some massive, um, massive wins, which you can, we discussed that yesterday, which is, you know, the people that say that options are the best way to go to the poor farm, except when they do pay off and you get 50 to one, uh, that's it. Now, I'm not going to always be in those 50 to one long shots, but they are mispriced for most of the time. You just have to uh, let your technical analysis line up with you taking those long shots, uh, which we do every once in a while in the, in the, uh, weekly new, uh, in the daily newsletter. Uh, anyway, we were talking about other stocks, TTM Technologies. Uh, this is the one that someone called me at 1315. And yes, I did sell it uh, at 15 bucks. We said, uh, I think he called me at 1350 back in here somewhere. And or yeah, I think I was in 1350. And I thought there was a good buck and a half in this one. And I thought there was an 80 or 90% chance this thing hit 15 bucks. Did hit 15 bucks and pulling back out here. But yes, I did sell it. Uh, sell it. What was the guy called me last week? Last Tuesday? A week ago, Tuesday? So, yeah, I think that was it. Hard to remember any of this stuff anymore. Um, big mover stamps.com. Need another one out here. Test the highs. Energy on the way back up. Not all that exciting. Now, uh, what's it doing today? We'll be back in a minute. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. 
Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And, uh, oh, we were talking about stamps.com. Um, somebody asked me about Twillow. To suspect that you want to test a 2598 on low volume. Need to get it. Stamps.com, we were looking at this one. Last high, about 900,000 shares on March 7th, 2016. 123.75. You got through it, kind of pulling back today on eh, lighterish volume. What I dislike about Stamps.com up here is the September 15th uh, low up to here. The energy was not very exciting compared to the way down back on March 7th, 2016, all the way down to the April 28th low. It had kind of a pop out here. Finally, continued to move down to 68.82. Uh, this one probably prime for a pullback to about 98 bucks, and then you got a nice gap there with some volume. But that's where support's going to come in back at 100 bucks. Um, so I would not be surprised that this thing whiffs. Um, there's just not that much business in stamps. Uh, they are the last uh, horse whip maker. Uh, in a world getting ready to go into cars. Uh, oh, let's talk a little bit about it because I had some uh, questions about Microsoft. Talked with John Logan a little bit this morning. Nice gap up here. They just continue to do everything right. Uh, can this continue to go higher? It could. I've been hoping to get a retrace. Never have, so uh, I will continue sitting on the sidelines. I like everything they're doing. Uh, the probably the big things to take away from their conference call is that it looks to me like Apple's giving up kind of on the Macintosh and on their laptops. They're more than glad to continue with whatever they're selling. Uh, at least the CEO at Microsoft says he's killing them, though. And I think that there isn't a lot of effort just because of the money that's made uh, for Apple to be that committed to building desktops and tablets anymore. It's kind of a very, uh, even if they did it well, it's not going to be the margin they need to replace the iPhones. And that's kind of it. Uh, other things going on out here. Well, we had Microsoft. What else did we have? I'm going to go back to my list of things out here. Uh, Google. Yesterday, I did say Google uh, would be the weakest one of the bunch. It's off about 1%. Got down to about 8, 10 after hours. Wasn't surprised at the thing. Uh, everybody tried to push it up a little higher, and then it moved back down. Uh, $800 looks like it would be support for Google. Again, I'm not saying the end of the world. It's this that, eh, for the most part, my analysis yesterday, which I won't retread over, was about true. Far too many bulls in one single stock. Not a lot of people thinking the market uh, 
was not there. Light volume uh, above the previous high for the last two days. Just did not seem to me like a good move. The energy off this last low compared to the move off the last high down to that last low was uh, fairly light. Now, part of that can be attributed to December. But uh, even when we look at the last few weeks, like I said, you know, the last couple of days, uh, we should have seen this thing break higher with volume if everybody was truly uh, very bullish on it. Da, 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 what else do we have? Uh, PayPal, uh, PYPL, uh, eBay bounced, and PayPal whiffed. Uh, you can make a claim out here uh, that this is an ABC, possible ABC down. You won't know to $38.06. Uh, INTC, a little higher out here. Uh, if you caught my conversation with uh, John Logan this morning on the tail end of his sh show, very tough to see anything out here. But again, you wanted to see about 80, 90 million shares. You got about half that so far today, which does not surprise me. Energy back up off this low. You had a high volume untested low on December 1st, which was more than the November uh, 4th low. Could there be, there's kind of a transitory period going on in Intel. And uh, I talk about it today in the Tech Insider, along with a new technology uh, that we've eh, talked about in the past, but probably the most significant uh, technology uh, in computers uh, that ship this week, and no one's talking about it. I cover that uh, along with a couple of positions uh, in that uh, longer-term newsletter where we've gone out with some uh, options out into March that I think could pay off very well, but some big... Uh, Big things going on in technology this week. Uh, not a lot of them, but uh, the ones uh, I'm going to cover a couple of them. A newsletter will be out here later today. I wanted to see how today actually closed and how some of the semis did. But uh, to me, you know, this is a good news. You probably want a little of a pullback. Nobody's talking about some of these new technologies. The other one I think that's very uh, important is that uh, we're talking about some new technology that will crack any encrypted uh, data almost instantly uh, and uh, yeah that's available today i don't know if they'd sell it to individuals but certainly it is for sale governments and uh, big corporations are buying it and it's there literally if you've ever encrypted anything it is hackable crackable in about a handful of seconds so don't expect anything that you're using uh, even military-grade encryption is uh, uh, available to be hacked. So the next time the FBI director tells you that he can't get in anything, we already know that's a lie. But uh, now it's literally everything that they can get in, which kind of took me back into my article today about sneakers, the 1992 uh, movie where somebody actually built a device like this. But it is available out there. And I tell you how you will profit from that knowledge in the future. So think on that. Anyway, give me a call at 877-927-6648. You got a few minutes here before the break, so you can get in the last segment if you want to. Uh, does that really take care of all the, uh, the stocks? We talked about Google. Uh, dude, we didn't really look at Apple. Again, I think Apple's just kind of meandering it on its way back up to this gap down. Again, I would not be short Apple as we continue to close in on the Apple 8. The Sell the sizzle and, of course, that pile of $200 million worth of cash uh, that could uh, – $200 billion worth of cash that could come back uh, means that uh, Apple is a no short for me. Even if it does not do well, people will buy it. I agree that the energy off this last November 14th low was light. I just don't see the wisdom – of coming after a company with a ton of cash going into a product upgrade cycle, which is exactly what these guys uh, are doing. Why does that not work? We'll just do this then. Okay. Now you are into this big gap down. And again, that's why I'm thinking we're kind of uh, at the very end of the rope for some of these stocks that they'll probably need a pullback or two to gain enough energy to break through these higher highs. Uh, Apple 
uh, pulled back in uh, July 22nd, so yeah, tw July 22nd of 2015, did come off that with 115 million shares. So what do we have today? Bueller, Bueller, 115 million shares. What do we got today? What do we have yesterday? 32 million shares. Today, 14 million shares. You're hitting that gap. 122 million, 14. Um, it's very rare to have a stock hit something with 10% of the volume continue on. Just, just saying, just saying. We'll be back after a minute. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Okay, uh, ignore the uh, little things at the top. I need to fix need to fix the uh, program. These are actually the February and then March uh, option curves on the SPY, not the uh, January and February. We need to get back programming this weekend. Guess I'll fix that. Uh, anyway, uh, when we look at the data going into next month, I uh, had a, people, a few people ask, we've got a pretty good indication that option market makers, at least now, think that we're probably going to do a little bit of a pullback. Now, they're saying somewhere around, um, you know, probably 2240 on the S&P cash, which was kind of the support resistance area at the law, at the far end of it. And again, we broke the highs. We did it on higher volume. So you can make a case out there 
that uh, we're just going to pull back and then the next move will be the real big one up. And that may make a little bit more sense, a little indecision uh, politically about what things are going on. Again, I start putting that together with the stocks and I start seeing stocks that are testing previous highs on lighter volume. I'm not looking at the index so much out here as what I think uh, at least the option market makers who are very good at what they do better than I think just about everybody else they're if they're not they're out of business within about three months they make very bad option decisions so they tend to be the best traders that Wall Street comes up with and uh, they know how to lay their uh, bets off correctly and they have a lot of software to, to back them up. But, you know, this is showing somewhere that the bottom end of that is somewhere around uh, 2240. Could we pull back to just 2270 and maybe they get a little more bullish? The answer is yes. Again, I'm not saying it's the end of the world. Just uh, think that maybe we might go up for a couple more days, kind of play around here with um, fun buying and then start seeing this back. Options expiration is February 17th. And uh, to me, eh, I think we just have too many people on one side of the boat. Again, that's more of a sentiment uh, issue. I see some other things out here that tell me we can kind of pull back a little bit. Again, I'm more playing this for the side of individual stocks. So I would much rather be short weak stocks than weak, uh, than short long, uh, good strong stocks. I don't think that there's much pullback if we get one in one. But there's some stocks that didn't participate very much in the, in the uh, last move up. Is it is it is the thinking that maybe the big money is pullbacks in those stocks that did not participate or did not do well or came up on light volume uh, better than trying to make an extra buck or two on a Microsoft over the next you know two weeks? Uh, to me, the answer is yes. I, I think there are some stocks that have uh, uh, some things going against them, and uh, that's why we have uh, maybe some puts out there into March. I want some time. I'm not saying it's going to happen in the next five minutes. I'm not looking at any 15-minute charts or five-hour charts, and uh, eh, I think maybe that's the best way to describe it out here. I think that there are some better long-term plays. You can always come and check out a free 30-day trial to my newsletter, one of them. At, uh, on the front page of TFNN.com. And I'm going to tell you a little secret here. I think this is a very good time to get a 30-day uh, trial of my newsletter. I'm starting to see some of those uh, shoots of a market that's uh, going to be vibrant and predictable, which are the two things that you want to see. And uh, I guess we're going to have Tom O'Brien in the next hour. So uh, he'll wrap up with his calls. And uh, then we'll see you next week. Same bat channel, same bat time. Remember to sell when you can, not when you have to. I've sold. You can too. See you Monday. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.